get reaction to South Africa being in technical recession after the second quarter? GDP data from Stats SA indicated a decrease of 0.7%. Of course, it followed a revised contraction of 2.6% in the first quarter of the year. Director and Chief Investment Officer at Citadel, George Herman, joins us now for this conversation. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to me, Sean. George, first talk to us about the economic implications of a technical recession in South Africa. Well, the, the word uh, technical recession comes from when we have two quarters in a row, that is a negative number. But in reality, the South African economy has been struggling for quite some time. The South African consumer has been under pressure due to the increase in VAT and several petrol price increases, plus very economic growth that we've seen over the last uh, decade, essentially, and hence uh, pressure on the consumer. So it's actually no surprise mm. that we now get to this situation. Having spoken about uh, the impact of a technical recession and the economic climate currently in South Africa, with particular focus on uh, the consumer, how does it practically affect the general South African with uh, the country being in technical recession? Well, when it gets to a recession, uh, literally like you have the fire in the city now, Mm. we have a fire in the financial markets where emerging markets are being sold off by global investors. And unfortunately, uh, we landed in the middle of the screens of the financial services yesterday with our recession number, and suddenly foreign investors attack our market as well. So the rank goes weaker, that pushes inflation higher, that may lead to higher interest rates in the future, all of which leads to a tougher environment for the consumer. George, what do you make then of Finance Minister Ntlantlanene speaking on the sidelines of engagements in Beijing, saying that there is no need to panic amid this technical recession, government is working on relief packages and reforms. Talk to us about your views there. Well, the, the minister knows that he has our respect and he's banking on that right now when he says that. Unfortunately, if you are not a South African, if you are a global investor and you listen to a minister of finance that only says, don't worry, we've got a plan, Mm. uh, that doesn't sound so confident and doesn't uh, alleviate their fears enough. So unfortunately, he was very underwhelming on uh, financial press this morning. What then do the latest events mean for efforts in garnering foreign investment to boost economic growth as government uh, is currently on an investment drive and uh, bolstering relations with the likes of China seeking foreign investment uh, to boost the economy and uh, stimulate growth? Uh, How does this affect uh, those efforts? Very, very good question. The president will have to uh, pull on all the favors and all the friends that he's made through the years to make that happen. Any investor who, uh, who looks at South Africa at this point in time from a totally objective point of view would have a tough time investing here. So we would look to some of our allies, to our friends, people who trust us for the long term and trust the ruling party that they can give policy certainty eventually to investors to invest at this point in time. Now, Citadel has raised fears of downgrade following the second consecutive GDP contraction. Talk to us about those fears. Unfortunately, Moody's uh, played some games last year by not actually downgrading us in December when they had the opportunity. Nothing of our credit metrics have uh, materially changed since then, but now they've been left behind uh, because they were hoping that uh, the the situation gets better. Uh, And now, unfortunately, with uh, the fact that economic growth is slow and tax revenue is slowing, uh, the fiscus is coming under pressure. The medium-term budget will be under enormous focus, and there is now a heightened risk that they may downgrade us now. Um, uh, Georgia, earlier on this month, or rather late last month, we thought we saw uh, SMB, SMP Global rather, when they downgraded Turkey to junk status following uh, the fall of the lira, that steep fall of that of uh, that uh, of that uh, basically uh, the the currency there. They indicated that uh, South Africa is not uh, in threat of a downgrade, and they indicated their further optimism uh, given uh, the turn of a tide that has been seen in terms of uh, sentiment uh, picking up in South Africa and confidence uh, currently in South Africa. Do you think they will still be of that view as they are expected to give their next review in the next couple of months? The credit metric scorecard for a sovereign or a country is an enormous scorecard that contains many factors. That comment that they made was on one metric, and that was that South Africa is not exposed to as much foreign debt 
as Turkey is. Mm. Turkey took on a lot of foreign debt to uh, fund their growth spurt that they've been driving off late, and that placed them under pressure as their currency weakened. We do not have that same Achilles heel. However, on a total overall scoring, South Africa's credit metrics is worse than that of Turkey. Right. What's to be said then about uh, the Reserve Bank's reaction to this as we see that uh, the RAND uh, continues uh, to suffer and in reaction to the latest GDP data and we do know that the central bank looks at uh, the performance of the RAND as well as the inflation in South Africa when it comes to deciding on rates and fiscal policy. Mr. Khanyahu has been uh very explicit in his views and made it crystal clear that the Reserve Bank would not intervene with a currency and that gives markets a lot of confidence. The Reserve Bank has a perfect track record uh, over the last uh, 15, 20 years of managing that very confidently. And so I don't think there's a problem there. The problem for them arises that if they look through into the medium term onto inflation expectations, this weakened rand combined with a higher oil price would lead to a higher inflation profile. So in other words, the next interest rate move that they have to consider would have to be a hike. Maybe we can get into the back end of next year only before they have to get to that. But I don't think they intervene in the currency at all. No. What's to be said then, George, about the latest events uh, on South Africa's ability to turn the tide? We found ourselves in a similar position uh, last year, just before the ousting of President Jacob Zuma. And uh, with uh, the confidence uh, that uh, came in with uh, the new leadership under Cyril Ramaphosa, we saw some sort of sentiment boost, but uh, it seems to be fading at this point. Yes, it is fading, but you touched on the point exactly. It's all about sentiment, not only fact. Even if we look at this GDP number, I mean, this is now long in the past. We're talking about the first half of this year, these numbers we're talking about. So, you know, it doesn't affect today, but why does it affect the markets today? It's because of sentiment issues. So we had overall positive sentiment in the beginning of the year with new leadership, negative sentiment now in the emerging market space, plus a couple of reasons. Your question is, what do we need to get out of this? We need confidence to improve we need sentiment to improve and we'll only get that with policy certainty we have a few difficult things that we have to work through but there's no reason why the president can't get us through that uh, in the in the foreseeable future Sometimes the world of economics uh, will uh, water down and uh, combine with uh, what happens politically. And it goes to my next question about political will. With the new president being Cyril Ramaphosa at the helm, is the political will present and seen in terms of a, a confidence booster going forward into turning the tide with uh, South Africa's economic climate? Absolutely. The financial markets trust and respect President Ramaphosa absolutely implicitly and believe that anything is possible. He he could be seen as one of the best negotiators on the planet and we are privileged to have him lead us through this turbulent period. Unfortunately, if we look behind him, that's where the market starts losing some faith. Does he have all the power? And the, the thinking process is that maybe he doesn't have in the private rooms all the levers of power in his hands yet, and that hopefully after next year's election he will be given all those levers of power, and yes, he does have the ability to fix this. How does that then translate into general sentiment, especially at a corporate level, where it is uh, seeming that uh, the president does hold uh, some sort of power, charm, finesse, but uh, behind closed doors, uh, the tables seem to turn, especially with announcements around uh, the land expropriation debate? That's exactly the problem with corporate South Africa right now is the uncertainty that it faces, that unfortunately the ruling party speaks from many different angles and speaks many different uh, viewpoints in a very short space of time. On the one hand, you have President uh, Ramaphosa placating and calming everybody, and then immediately, uh, you know, even on the same day, we have other ministers saying something to the opposite effect. And unfortunately, that creates uncertainty and hence places corporate South Africa in a, in a situation where they do not commit entirely yet. As a parting shot, can South Africa survive the, this latest technical recession? Yes, absolutely. We are not fundamentally broken. This is a sentiment issue. This is in the midst of an emerging market crisis. We will come through this. Thank you so much for your input, Director and Chief Investment Officer at Citadel. George Herman talking to us about the effects of uh, South Africa in technical recession following two consecutive GDP contractions, uh, that of 0.7% in the second quarter of this year and a revised 2.6% in the first quarter of this year.